Today on Hearts of Heroes, a cataclysmic windstorm tears apart a Texas home. And then I look up and I'm like, why is my roof filling up? Inside, a woman and her pet. First thing I thought was I needed to get in there. I was the only one there that could do anything in time. Plus, a tropical storm leaves a man sinking in his vehicle. First responders perform a rescue they'll never forget. All I thought was I got someone trapped in the vehicle. We need to get this person out. These heroes' only goal is to save lives. They say everything's bigger in Texas. I know we've all heard that before, but it often includes the weather. The Lone Star State each year has hurricanes, tornadoes, flash floods, monster hail, I could go on. But in July of 2020, it wasn't any of those usual suspects, but rather a microburst struck the small town of Brownfield, Texas. Luckily, First responders and dispatchers worked together to make sure everyone made it to safety. Known as the Star of the South Plains, Brownfield, Texas is just 35 miles southwest of Lubbock. Like many rural communities, this town of 10,000 is the kind of place where neighbors look out for neighbors. It's a small community, very family oriented. Brownfield has neighbors that if I needed sugar, I could have sugar. And if I'm stuck on the side of the road, They'll just come and help me. Virgie Alanese is an emergency dispatcher in Brownfield. It's a little tight-knit community, small, less than 10,000 people. So when we get calls here, it's pretty much somebody we probably know. <laughs> because Brownfield is in the semi-arid Texas panhandle, summer can bring both high temps and high winds. Brownfield has a lot of heat in it. It gets up to like 107 degrees. Often we get gusts up to 70 miles an hour. We usually have a lot of winded, strong wind advisories, wind storms, dust storms. Now, when a thunderstorm forms, it has incredible power. That gets put into something called the updraft. That keeps going high into the atmosphere and actually can hold up heavy raindrops and even hail. In some cases, though, dry air can sneak in at the mid-levels. It can interrupt the updraft, and all of that air can fall with it, the water and the hail crushing to the ground. It's called a wet microburst. When that air comes rushing down, it can be amazingly forceful and do tons of damage. That is exactly what Ebony Elmore lived through one June afternoon in 2020. That particular day was very beautiful outside. We had no warning, we had no storm advisories. We didn't even know it was gonna rain. After Ebony got off of work at a convenience store, she headed home and got ready for a night out with a friend. And I went home, did my makeup, went outside to grab something. And I looked to my left, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's really dark. I think a storm's coming. And me, I just was like, oh, it's just normal rain. Ebony went back inside and kept getting ready for the evening. Suddenly, though, things took a horrifying turn. The pellets started hitting, the rain started making the trailer shake. There was lightning and thunder too. And my room doesn't have a light in it. So I was like, huh, it's a little bit brighter than usual, not thinking of nothing. And then I look up and I'm like, why is my roof filling up? Ebony was shocked. The wind was actually ripping the roof off her trailer. So I grabbed my phone and my keys, and I was going outside. And then as soon as I hit that doorway between my room and the living room, the living room collapses. I was stuck, like purely stuck. No way to get out. No, like windows, you couldn't get out because there was air conditioners in there. I'm just stuck. Even though Ebony was frightened and in a state of panic, she did the smart thing. She found the most stable place in our home and covered herself to keep from getting injured. This quick thinking may have saved her life. Ebony knew that she had no way out, so she called 911. So while I was under that blanket, I was like, if I don't call them soon, there ain't gonna be a house or a me to find. Department. 
You could imagine with the storm ravaging the town, 911 was flooded with calls. And your name? That is when Virgie answered Ebony's call. When she called, she says, my roof just collapsed and I'm trapped inside. I said, did you say the roof just caved in in your house? And she says, yes, and I'm trapped inside. And I'm like, wow. Coming up, a brave officer has to perform a daring escape. So I just threw her over my shoulders and ran back to my unit. And later, firefighters in Florida attempt the rescue of a lifetime. The car started to sink further down the canal, but you know that there is somebody in there, that somebody is just trying to get out. But first, this safety tip. If you've ever heard the surprising sound of an emergency alert pop up on your mobile phone, it did its job correctly by getting your attention. Wireless emergency alerts are sent out by authorities to help warn you of severe weather. The information is potentially life-saving, and it's sent out to help keep you out of harm's way. So make sure your mobile device is enabled to receive these emergency alerts. It could save you and your family's lives. In June of 2020, Ebony Elmore was getting ready for a night out when her trailer home was struck by a quick and potent thunderstorm, leaving her in a mountain of wreckage. They classified it as a sudden downburst, which is just a straight burst down, and everything around that, just everything blows out. She just happened to be, like, right in the middle of it. Trapped and terrified, Ebony managed to get 911 operator Virgie Alanese on the line. She said that the roof of her trailer had caved in, and she was trapped inside. Virgie immediately dispatched Officer Jonathan Saylor. Law enforcement's usually the first responders that are on scene. Given the situation, I was the only one there that could do anything in time. Even though they may not be trained in certain types of rescue, you can always count on first responders to do whatever they can to help those in need. While Officer Saylor rushed to the scene, Virgie stayed on the phone with Ebony to help keep her calm. Ebony, I need you to take a deep breath for me, OK? She was really motherly. She sounded scared, too, honestly. She sounded so scared for me. Virgie tried to get as much information as she could, but Ebony only had one thing on her mind. Just don't let me in my cat, don't let my cat in. She was mentioning your cat. I said, Ebony, I know you want your cat, but l l let's get you out first, and then we'll see what we can do. Within minutes, Officer Saylor was there, but the house was crumbling around Ebony, so he knew that he only had moments to get her out. Once I got in there, I started calling out her name. She just said, I'm over here. I'm back here! <laughs> I started clearing my the pathway to her and got her out, pulled her over the, the debris. I couldn't move out of the way. We were hurrying up and getting out of the house because you never knew when the trailer was going to, the roof was going to flop because he was, like, going back and forth. So I just threw her over my shoulders and ran back to my unit. She was frantic. She was worried about her, her animals. I told her we would, we would come back for her animals. I just needed to get her to my car. Just as they reached the squad car, they heard a thunderous crash. The wind shifted directions. It picked that roof up that it already knocked off and rolled it over on the house. Where Ebony was stuck at, was completely flattened. So if I wasn't moved, that corner would have hit me. They were both lucky to make it out alive. <laughs> Still, Ebony knew that her kitten was somewhere inside that mess. She was worried about her cat. She wanted to go back and get her cat. Officer Saylor knew that it was too dangerous to go back in, so he took Ebony to the police station where she was reunited with her family. My mom ended up coming and getting me from there. And they wanted me to go to the emergency room and get checked and stuff. But I was like, no, I got to go find my cat. Fortunately, Ebony only had minor cuts and bruises. So with the help of her family, she went back to what was left of her trailer. She had to find that kitten. My family ended up lifting up the wall of the trailer. And then they heard the cat meowing. And it was underneath there. Miraculously, her kitten was frightened, but unharmed. And when they found him, it was like finding the holy grail. Ever since that day, we're like two peas in a pie. 
Today, Ebony is moving forward with her life. Although she lost her home, she has found a new apartment and she's looking forward to the future. Despite the traumatic event, she's always gonna be grateful to the brave officer and the compassionate dispatcher who came to her rescue. Thank y'all, y'all saved my life. They really did. Because I swear, if they were not there, if that, that operator wasn't so polite, stayed on the phone with me, got all the details, Officer Sailor didn't come and help me, I would have been dead. <laughs> there would not be a story. Coming up, a man is trapped in his sinking vehicle. Will first responders get to him in time? Someone's in the vehicle? Yes, they banging on the window. When we got there, we saw the car basically nose down in the water. When hurricanes and tropical storms hit, you can get wind, you can get rain, storm surge, tornadoes, and of course, flash flooding. And it can all cause immense damage, not to mention the immediate danger to people's lives. For first responders, swift water rescues can be extremely dramatic. In these heart-stopping events, heroes have to put their own safety on the line to pull people from the deadly currents. The city of Lauderhill, Florida is a bedroom community of 66,000, just outside of Fort Lauderdale. It sits on what used to be thousands of acres of dairy farm. Today, cows and grazing pastures have been replaced with golf courses, lakes, and neighborhoods. Lauderhill is very diverse. We have a community that's younger towards the east side, and the west side is older community lots of different ethnicities, cultures, and things like that. It's very diverse. Because Lauder Hill is right on the Florida coast, it's definitely susceptible to hurricanes. That seasonal threat of tropical cyclones keeps Florida's first responders on their toes. During hurricane season, the call volume tends to pick up twofold here in the city, because you're not only covering your zone, but when other trucks go out of zone, you've now got to back up their zone, and other, sometimes even departments are asking for our help as well. Luckily, these paramedics and firefighters prepare for just such events. Training is very important because without it, we can't be good at what we do. We, can't, we need to maintain the skills that we have so we can do the job properly. One of our models is prepare for the worst, providing the best. We're always ready for that, to kick it into full gear. But in November 2020, as Hurricane Ada barreled toward Lauder Hill, few in the department could have predicted the type of rescue that they were about to perform. Leading up to that day, there was a lot of rain in Florida. It was, it was really just, it was saturated. South Florida was saturated. I, I've never had this experience before where my backyard and my house was flooded. By the time Ada made landfall on November 9th, it had been downgraded from a hurricane to a tropical storm, but it still dropped more than a foot of rain on the state. When I came in, I told my crew, I go, this day is gonna be a bad day. And we were all agreeing, but we were all prepared for it. As Etta hovered over Lauder Hill, the heavy downpour began overflowing lakes and canals, flooding entire city streets. We were seeing it throughout the day, how the water levels were rising. We barely could even get through the roads and the rain wasn't gonna stop. As the firefighters responded to stranded vehicles on flooded roads, they got one very alarming call. As we're coming back to the city of Lauder Hill, we hear a call come in for a swift water rescue. And I was like, uh, well, we don't hear that often. At first you're like, okay, swift water rescue, where is that gonna be? What they didn't know yet was that a 55-year-old man had accidentally driven over the side of his apartment parking lot and into a flooded canal. Somebody drove into the lake right here by a condo. The car is floating right here in the lake. You can't really see the lines in the roadway. You don't know where the curbs are. You don't know, you know, if you're, you know, if over there is gonna be a six-foot drop or not. Firefighters Lombardi and Moniz rushed to the scene. While en route, the updates kept coming in that there's someone trapped, maybe two victims. Someone's in the vehicle? Yes, they banging on the window. There was no time to lose, but because of the storm, it was not gonna be easy to get there. Because the roads are flooded, so we can't get there as fast as we'd like to get there. So everything kind of just slows down. To save time, the two men quickly began devising a rescue strategy. 
So me and Marty decided, just had came up with a plan while en route to the call. We just said, I said, Mike, I'm going in the water. When we got there, I saw the, we saw the car basically a nose down in the water, slowly moving along the canal. There's all these bystanders, and everyone's going, he's in the car, he's in the car, he's in the car. You're not really processing what's going on, but you know that there is somebody in there, that somebody is just trying to get out. Coming up, firefighters have to make a split-second decision. You could already tell that the car was filled with water. And I was just like, what are we doing? What are we going to do? But first, a tip to keep you safe. Though technology can often seem confusing and overwhelming, there are aspects to it that can help save lives. Some might not know this, but cell phones with voice recognition can actually call 911 for you in case you're in need of critical help. Simply command your phone to dial 911 and get the help you need. Use technology to your advantage because your life is the most precious possession you could ever own. In November of 2020, Tropical Storm Ada was pounding the Florida coast with up to 14 inches of rain. Within the city of Lauder Hill, it was flooded, and one guy drove his car accidentally into a rushing canal. Firefighters Joel Moniz and Michael Lombardi were on the scene in minutes. As we get in, the canal, uh, the car started to sink further and further down the canal embankment. When I saw that, we knew we had to secure the vehicle somehow, some way. That's when we were, this came up with our plan that we needed a rope. I threw it over to someone, a bystander, who wrapped it around a tree. Putting their own safety aside, Lombardi and Moniz made their way out to the sinking vehicle. Yeah, all I thought was, I got someone trapped in the, in the vehicle. We need to get this person out. The two men tied the rope to the car, and that would keep it from floating away. At the same time, Good Samaritans rallied to help. There was like 10 people on shore that were all in unison trying to pull this car up to prevent it from going down further. Meanwhile, firefighter and paramedic Steven Rivera heard the call that there was a swift water rescue in progress. Once we heard the updates that our partners were in the water, that's when like the, the regular stress becomes super stress. We gotta go, we gotta get there because they need help. As Rivera arrived, firefighters Moniz and Lombardi were desperately trying to get the man out of the sinking vehicle, but all the doors and windows were locked. Now you could already tell that the car was filled with water. I was looking at Joel and I was just like, what, what, like, what are you gonna do? What are we doing? What are we going to do? Luckily, Joel had a special tool called a center punch that's designed to break out car windows. I guess another one, but... So I then grabbed the center punch and we popped the window, clearing out all the glass. I came back up for air. Lombardi went down and felt around. I, thought, I felt something squishy and I was like, I don't know what this is. And I looked at Joel and I said, I think I got this guy. And he's like, well, let's pull him up. We pulled him up to the surface. We pulled him to the shore where I had my paramedic crew. Mike and I handed him off to them. Paramedic Steven Rivera began life-saving resuscitation, but the man had been underwater for several minutes and he was not breathing. So we got him on uh, the backboard, uh, started doing compressions. He showed signs of life. You know, just a little gas here and there. The bystanders, they were cheering us on. They were looking at him and he was t like gasping. For us, we get motivated and, and we do our job even better. It was really an uplifting moment. You know, like I think we have an opportunity to, to really do something right now. The man was gasping, but still unable to breathe without assistance. We're trying to get all the water out of his stomach and then he started to breathe on his own. So he came back. They rushed him to the hospital in critical condition. Incredibly, he made a full recovery. And it was all thanks to the heroic efforts of the members of the Lauder Hill Fire Department. To come back and recover after that, after being dead for five, 10 minutes, that doesn't happen. You could ask any doctor what the statistics are. That doesn't happen. It was a, a humbling experience just to be a part of that, that rescue team that day. It was uh, definitely, you know, it definitely puts things into perspective. To know that that man's walking the earth still is because of us who were in here. So I can't, I, it's awesome. You could give somebody a gift, but if you save their life, that's, 
There, there's no words for that. If you could give me a Ferrari or a house or a million dollars, I would, I would prefer to save this guy because that feels better. Now, whether it's firefighters, police, or paramedics, I know that I'm grateful, you're grateful, we really all should be grateful for these brave men and women. These are the people who are always trained and prepared whenever a disaster strikes. We'll see you next time on Hearts of Heroes.